All right, tubes. Well, everybody's asked. So here we go, covering the floating bed. All right, so pretty simple. Actually, somebody just recently asked me about a king size mattress. So a king size mattress is actually 76 by 80 inches standard industry. So if you were going to make the floating bed, you would want to subtract 12 inches from the three sides of the bed to create your floating illusion. So that would mean 76 inches minus 24, which gives you 52. And 80 inches minus 12 is 68 because you don't worry about the head space. Because the, usually the bed's against the wall. Um, and vice versa down the list. Now building this, when you cut your lumber, your 68 inches is obviously going to be your length from... Let's see if I can draw this real fast like so. I'm actually watching myself through the phone. Write this. So your boards this way will be 68 inches. And for your boards for crossed, you know this board should be, this width should be 52 inches. But to achieve that by putting the boards on the inside, you have to subtract 3 inches. So you're going to 52 minus three because each two by four or two by six is one and a half inches wide which will give you 49 inches so that each board here will be 49 inches and i squared mine off at 16 inches the whole way that way when i tied the top to the bottom everything was at 16 centers so when I built my top box, which comes out around here, now this will be 80 inches long for the king size mattress. And suck, I suck at drawing, so have fun with that on the comments. Especially when they're drawing on top of a toolbox. Uh, wooden toolbox holds all my screws and everything else. So your outside board will be 76 inches long from here to here. So you're going to have to obviously subtract th 3 inches, so that will be 73 inches for each board, and your sideboards will be 80 inches. Oh, it looks like we're at 88. So simple. And all I did was, to keep things square, I just use a standard quick square, and I choose Deckmates. Uh, they're a really hardy screw. Um, I've had really good results with them. I mean, if it's an available option, you always use a nail gun. And I mean, something like this could be done even with this little Ryobi chop saw. And if there shouldn't that be an option, you can always use a, a simple corded saw or a cordless saw and use your quick square to hold on the board as a guide and use that as a rip fence with your saw. So, real simple, easy. All right, well, thanks for coming. All the questions hope this helps out some any questions further please ask thank you so much subscribe comment